Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including the fully leaked ludicrous Model 3, celebrities getting Cybertrucks, massive Tesla depreciation, and more. So let's get into it, and a special thanks to Recurrent for sponsoring this video. First up today, Tesla has just rolled out a few new software features that should do a lot to improve the experience of using these cars. First, they have just introduced a feature to their navigation app that drivers have been asking for. In software update 2024.2.6, Tesla has added special marks to their navigation that let you see upcoming obstructions like accidents and road closures. This feature has been available for a while now through services like Apple Maps, Google Maps, and Waze. So it's another way that Tesla is making their built-in maps that much better, hopefully eliminating the need for certain certain users to use a phone. If they are going to replace CarPlay with their own system and not support CarPlay, it does need to hold up to the features that CarPlay has, and this is one of them. Tesla hacker Green has also spotted code that gives the driver plenty of options to pick from when choosing their route, allowing you to choose fastest, shortest, no tolls, etc. There are more features coming to other markets as well, like red light and speed camera displays in China. At the same time here, Tesla should be rolling out a feature in the future that's arguably more exciting. Drew Baglino tweeted that sentry mode power consumption needs improvement. The team is working to reduce by around 40% in a Q2 software update. This is a pretty big deal because for many Tesla drivers, anytime their car is parked away from home or a designated safe location, sentry mode is active. It records with the cameras around the car anytime there is a motion event, and it's a great security system, but it does drain your battery some. It becomes noticeable when parked at locations for a long time, with customers seeing 10 to 15% loss per day, or sometimes 1 to 2% per hour. So a 40% improvement there could mean it instead uses around 6 to 9% of your car's battery in a full day. This all leads to better efficiency and lowered charging costs since your car isn't using as much. I'm excited to see that and hope it truly does arrive sometime in Q2. All of these little efficiency improvements add up a lot over time. On the FSD side of things, Tesla has begun rolling out FSD beta version 12.2.1 to some owners. The big change here is the end-to-end -end neural nets approach, which should lead to a better overall driving experience. Many see this as the true leap forward for Tesla, but time will tell. Owners have seen V12 perform really good U-turns, and some less good. It also seems to hunt for parking spots when navigating to a parking lot, which is a peek at a feature Tesla has talked about for a long time, Park Seek. It's a slow rollout, just like most of FSD, but will be very interesting to watch. I'm excited to try it myself, but I always keep FSD versions at a bit of a distance before getting my hopes up. Next up today, Tesla's all-new Model 3 has fully leaked as Tesla prepares to release this car, and it's very exciting. In the past year, we've seen a lot of small leaks and rumors about what Tesla would be doing with a performance Model 3. It became clear pretty quickly, though, that they are planning something a bit different and special with this performance model, since they entirely refreshed or, quote, re-engineered the Model 3, but did not release a performance version. With that new model releasing, the top spec disappeared entirely. We've seen Tesla out testing this in the wild, and we can tell because it is a new Model 3, but it's covered up still. We also got a peek at the new front seats, which are specifically for the sport interior. This particular Model 3 was spotted, and it says engineering vehicle, but it was clear that while being the upgraded performance model with new seats, these aren't the release wheels. Now it has fully been spotted in the wild as Tesla is filming with it. This short video posted on X shows the Model 3 in ultra red driving by. If we freeze it, in the first second we can see red brake calipers and wheels that we have not seen before. These wheels look pretty cool and unlike anything we've seen on a performance Tesla before. From the side, it looks exactly like the refreshed Model 3 with one exception, the spoiler. You can see the spoiler and new wheels clearly here, along with the badge on the rear. At first glance, this appears to be a plaid badge, just like the Model S and X, but when we zoom in, we can see that it matches the ludicrous badge from the parts catalog. That should mean that this is dual motor and not tri-motor. The rear diffuser could have some differences as well, but it's a bit hard to fully tell in this sighting. Inside, we know that the Model 3 we see here has these upgraded seats, and the full list of differences between this and the long-range version is those seats, different wheels, red calipers, a front splitter, the ludicrous badge, lowered suspension, and rear spoiler. The question then is, what is this bringing in the performance department? We assume it's still dual motor, but how much quicker and how much better is it than the current long-range Model 3 or the previous Model 3 performance? As for that front splitter, there was a video also posted of Tesla working with a stealth gray Model 3 Ludicrous. They uncover it, and right there we can see the difference in the front bumper between this and the other Model 3 trims. Again, it's a bit tough to tell with the lighting here and such, but the front bumper is quite a bit different, and will be noticeable when side-by-side -side in person. This is the first time Tesla has made a true exterior change to the performance trim of the Model 3 or Y, and it will help this car stand out from the other trims. 
This filming was happening in Spain, and that leads me to wonder if Tesla will first release this out of Giga Shanghai. Giga Shanghai now serves Tesla's European markets for the Model 3 and Y, and it's part of why the Model 3 refresh launched there six months before the US. This could be happening again with the performance trim, or they could be planning to launch it simultaneously in both markets. If that's the case, we may see Tesla doing some promotional filming somewhere in the US with the performance Model 3 soon. We'll have to wait and see. One thing I'm very curious with those wheels is how they do with efficiency. Right now, the Model 3 gets a 341 mile EPA estimated range with aero wheels, so maybe those updated performance wheels come with a bit of a balance between performance and efficiency. Typically, the performance Tesla has less range, so we'll see by how much. In any case, this is exciting to see. It's not a massive difference, but it is far more noticeable than any prior performance Model 3, and that's good to see. Next up today, the latest for the Cybertruck. The Cybertruck's rollout continues with many more owners taking delivery of their Foundation Series trucks, and production is scaling up at Giga Texas. It's still slow, but steady. Last we saw, there were 156 Cybertrucks at Giga Texas, with many in the outbound lot for deliveries. In Las Vegas, 15 were spotted getting ready for delivery. We're also seeing many customers wrap their trucks in interesting ways, like this gloss white Cybertruck, this one in baby blue, or this one in matte black. It seems to be a big hit among celebrities as well. So far, we've seen Serena Williams in one, Pharrell in one, and then most recently, Lady Gaga, Jay-Z and Beyonce, and then Kim Kardashian. Tesla is definitely prioritizing deliveries to celebrities here because it's quite doubtful that these people all happen to order on the night of this truck's unveil, but it does make sense. This is a level of free advertising unlike any other, and regardless of the reputation many want this truck to have, it just can't be ignored. As for wraps from Tesla, they released three new colors this past week, so you can now get this wrapped direct from Tesla in satin rose gold, satin abyss blue, slip gray, satin stealth black, and satin ceramic white. Currently, you can get these wrapped at Tesla service centers in California, including West Covina, Oceanside, Costa Mesa, and Santa Clara. Next up, let's talk about today's sponsor, Recurrent. Recurrent is a free platform designed by battery scientists to analyze your EV's range and battery. EV drivers can connect to their car for daily owner insights, and they currently have around 20,000 active vehicles for 50 plus makes and models in all 50 states. Here's a sample report for a 2023 Tesla Model Y, which details this car's expected range, real world range, range in three years, how much time is left on the warranty, and more. When it's time to sell or trade in, EV sellers can now use their recurrent info to sell their car for more by showing their range and battery are strong. Recurrent's network of dealerships pays a premium for these cars, and I had success using this early on when selling my 2018 Model 3. The buyer beat all online offers and came to my house to pick up the Model 3. With their service, the EV owner makes more money, and for large auto auctions, they've found that including recurrent battery insights increased the average sale price by $1,400 and helped cars sell faster. If you're looking to buy your first EV, shoppers can check the range, battery, and tax credit eligibility on tens of thousands of used EVs for free with recurrent reports. It's free for consumers, no data is ever shared without consent, and battery data is handled securely with end-to-end -end encryption. With recurrent, we can buy, drive, and sell electric cars positively. So check them out by clicking the link in the description below. The official Cybertruck page on X posted videos of Dave Sparks testing out his Cybertrax, and it's a pretty crazy thing to see. It's probably safe to say that this is the craziest modification we will ever see on the Cybertruck, and it has already happened within the first few months. Right now, the Cybertruck is not shipping with the wheel covers installed due to an issue where it was prematurely wearing down the sidewalls of tires. The timeline of a fixed version is unclear, but a Cybertruck with altered wheel covers was spotted in the wild this week, and they're definitely not as good of a look. Here's another look at them from a different angle. Reportedly, these aren't actually the updated wheel covers that will be replacing the initial ones that had this issue. These wheel covers are what are meant for the smaller, more efficient Tesla wheels that will be on the Cybertruck in the future. Here's what those wheels look like without any cover on it, at least in current testing. So we may still be waiting to see how Tesla fixes the original wheel covers. Those had a great look to them that helped the round wheels keep with the Cybertruck's angular aesthetic, but that issue needs to be fixed. Over in California, a Cybertruck's windows were put to the test when a break-in was attempted. The Cybertruck has armored glass, so this criminal tried many different windows with standard window breaking tools and did not succeed. This is obviously still very unfortunate and disappointing to see and likely devastating to the owner, but they weren't able to get in. This will surely be a very expensive insurance claim, and I'm curious to see how much that ends up being in that regard, but at least they weren't able to get in to steal things. 
Next up today, I just want to mention a pretty crazy thing for certain Teslas, depreciation. Teslas have gone through phases over the years of being worth more than you bought them for or less, depending. At the same time, Elon Musk has talked about Teslas appreciating with time, mainly due to things like FSD. In practice though, as they scale up, this isn't quite the case. It especially isn't the case with the Model S Plaid, which seems to have hit at the worst possible time for cost. When it launched, the Model S Plaid was a $130,000 vehicle, but it was very exciting since it was the quickest accelerating vehicle in production. Since then, this vehicle became widely available, things changed in the market as a whole, interest rates increased, and Tesla massively lowered the price of this vehicle new. Brand new today, a Model S Plaid is $40,000 less expensive than it was at launch at $89,990. As such, used Plaid Model S's are going for very low prices. Here's a 2021 Tesla Model S Plaid, which was $131,440 in 2021, and about two and a half years later, it's selling with 51,000 miles on it for $60,000. If it sells at that price, that's a 54.4% depreciation, losing $71,441. Another is for sale in California at $75,475. New that car was $147,630 with its upgrades, so that's a 48.9% depreciation. This is one of the worst situations we've seen here in a while, but it does show the cost early adopters can pay for buying right away and that Teslas don't always appreciate. I'm curious to see how this could work with the Cybertruck once scaled up and Foundation Series orders have run out, but this is likely to be a completely different story given that car's popularity. Next up today, some updates regarding the construction of Tesla's upcoming factory, Giga Mexico. Tesla announced this project last March, and despite their initial claim that it would be moving quickly to completion, the project has done anything but move fast. First, the project was mired by permitting issues that put it on hold for several months. Those were eventually cleared up, but now the holdup has shifted to Tesla's side. Back in October, the company announced that while the factory was still going to come, concerns over the economy had led them to put it on the back burner. Meanwhile, the Mexican government is very eagerly pushing for construction to begin sooner than later. The state of Nuevo Leon pushed through all of the necessary permits and put together a $135 million incentive package for Tesla. As Mexico begins laying down the roads and utilities that will make this factory feasible, Tesla has so far been very quiet in response. The state's governor announced that Tesla had requested an extension of their environmental permit, quote, because it seems that the plant is going to be bigger than they thought. The governor hopes that Tesla will announce construction this coming month once the construction of necessary utilities is further along, but the company has not commented. Tesla hasn't said when they may start again in earnest on this project, but since they announced that their upcoming affordable EV will start production in Texas first rather than the originally planned Mexico, it may be a while before this new factory is a priority. The story of this factory has been very muddled since it was announced, and its future doesn't seem any clearer at this point. I'm very curious to see when we can expect this factory to come, as Tesla's plans no longer seem to require it immediately. Meanwhile, as Chinese automakers begin their own process of building factories in Mexico, that could be a major step for those companies doing increased business in the US. Those companies have proven to be major competition for Tesla abroad, so if they want to maintain their lead in North America, then Tesla does need to move quickly on their upcoming affordable EV. While they will be making that car first in Texas, that factory is also responsible for the Model Y and Cybertruck in the US, so there's a lot going on there. Mexico will likely be very important in the future, just not the immediate future. Last up today, some updates from other automakers. Rivian has just announced that their upcoming R2 vehicle will launch in Europe, although customers there will have to wait before they can order it. Rivian's smaller and more affordable R2 platform is going to be revealed on March 7th in a special live-streamed event from Laguna Beach, California. Their initial R1 vehicles are only available in the US and Canada, and that left a lot of people wondering whether their new vehicles with wider appeal may come to other markets. Well, it's official. This vehicle will be making its way to Europe. Rivian has added to their website that it will be eventually coming to Austria, Belgium, Switzerland, France, Germany, Spain, the UK, Italy, and the Netherlands. Currently, they do not say when this vehicle will become available to order in those countries, but we do know that it will be coming after its launch in the US, and we don't know that launch date yet. Rivian has already delivered their electric cargo vans to Amazon in Europe, but this will be their first passenger vehicle available outside North America. Rivian clearly has big plans for the R2 as their first attempt in making a more affordable mass market vehicle. I'm very excited to watch that upcoming reveal, and I can't wait to find out more. Hyundai has just announced that they will be debuting their upcoming Ioniq 7 later this year, and it will be part of a new era for the company. Hyundai has been rapidly expanding their EV presence in the US, getting 4.5% of the market while not offering access to the federal EV tax credit. Later this year, they will be opening a battery and EV mega plant in Georgia that should give them access to the credit once things are rolling there. This plant is expected to open as soon as October and the Ionic 7 will likely be part of its initial lineup. 
The Ionic 7 has a very similar body shape, suspension, and wheels to the Kia EV9, a vehicle that it is expected to share a lot of components with. With the introduction of this exciting new three-row SUV design and the potential future eligibility for the EV tax credit, it's definitely an exciting time for Hyundai's EVs. This car will make its official debut this June in South Korea. We'll be sure to keep an eye open for the latest on that upcoming Georgia factory and what vehicles could become eligible as more information becomes available there. Even though Ford announced slowdowns to their EV programs a few months ago, they are still doing a lot to drive up sales of those vehicles. After cutting prices in Canada just a few days ago, Ford has just slashed prices for all trims of the Mustang Mach-E. Prices have been lowered anywhere between $3,100 and up to $8,100 for certain trims. This means that the base rear-wheel drive trim of this vehicle can be purchased starting at $39,895. In addition, Ford announced that any Mustang Mach-E that a customer leases through Ford Credit are eligible for a $7,500 cash incentive. In addition, qualifying buyers may be able to get 0% 72-month financing. All of these price cuts and incentives together do a lot to make this car a very enticing option for customers. On top of that, Ford has rolled out some new cash incentives for some trims of the 2023 Ford F-150 Lightning. Three trims, the Lariat, XLT, and Pro, currently are eligible for the full $7,500 EV tax credit. That tax credit is available at the point of purchase, and on top of that, Ford is also giving some generous cash bonuses. The XLT Extended Range trim is offering an additional $7,500 cash incentive, the Lariat Standard and Extended Ranges have a $5,000 bonus, and Platinum Trim customers are being offered a $12,500 incentive. Customers interested in leasing one of these vehicles are also being offered some great incentives. These should do a lot to drive up interest in these vehicles. Ford is at an interesting place in their EV rollout, and I'm very curious to see how these incentives will affect their sales and their current plans going forward. They definitely will affect profitability for the time being. Currently, all shipments of the F-150 Lightning are on hold though for an undisclosed issue, so that could cause some indefinite delays, but we will see when they resume there. Hopefully it's soon. Ford also leaked their J3400 to CCS adapter that will make their current EVs compatible with Tesla superchargers. There's not much to see here and not too much of a surprise, but it's good to see things truly moving forward in this regard. It will make it that much easier to own any EV. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see why you may want to wait to buy a new Model 3, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.